uh, all members in a, in a population, they share these particular characteristics as opposed to inductive. Inductive, you come now to be specific, to be clear, you narrow down to be for example, identify a certain member in that population. You said that in that, in that population, uh, this uh, member has this particular characteristics. Now, maybe after undertaking a series of experiments and set, uh, to ascertain maybe observation, you find that actually uh, all members maybe of that population, they share these uh, particular characteristics. Yeah, thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, when we try to look about the methods of conducting research, there could be so many methods of conducting research, including surveys, experiments, observations, and interviews. And when we say, uh, we talk about the surveys, uh, it could be a baseline survey, and line survey, and maybe, uh, or even a structured questionnaire. So you come up with a questionnaire containing some information, you want to target a certain, and this usually, it is not experimental. And maybe, yeah, they normally take uh, a short, short time uh, because maybe for, you can even contact within a few hours or even minutes, just co uh, collecting maybe opinions of uh, maybe of people on a certain topic. You want to know maybe how uh, informed, maybe uh, for example, you wanted to uh, study maybe the knowledge on a particular topic, the attitude, so maybe for example, practices or of maybe for example, antimicrobial resistance of a certain, or maybe among the students. So you just contact a simple survey. So uh, maybe for example, uh, a baseline survey, just only to understand how these people have knowledge on, on a particular topic. Uh, maybe for example, after that, you are certain the level of knowledge of those people. Uh, you would maybe for example, uh, be uh, uh, maybe you just wanted to give uh, uh, maybe information, maybe a training on a particular to inform these people on uh, maybe a particular topic of interest. You wanted to uh, teach them maybe, for example, about antimicrobial resistance. So maybe after that, maybe you realize that these people actually have learned something on antimicrobial resistance. These people have learned something or uh, from the topic that they had administered. So maybe after that, you also need to uh, conduct a baseline survey to maybe, for example, to, to deduce how much maybe, maybe these people have learned, maybe or what concepts of maybe of antimicrobial systems have these people learned at the end, maybe at the end of this session, maybe for example, even after this session, uh, maybe for example, you conduct maybe for some underlying survey, what did you maybe for example, learn from the session, something like that. Yeah, and uh, normally questionnaires need to maybe in, contain uh, a lot of information as compared to the, uh, the baseline. Yeah, experiments, these normally involve laboratory works. And uh, maybe, yeah, maybe you go to the, uh, to the laboratory, you conduct your research, find your observations, and uh, be able to uh, actually come up with uh, the hypothesis, you prove maybe the hypothesis, see through, the sit align to objectives and something like that. And uh, in social sciences, we refer to this as uh, quasi experiments. And uh, in maybe for example, in, uh, uh, maybe the science fields, maybe medical, uh, in the medical fields, uh, this normally involve uh, mainly the laboratory works, or it could even involve people, or maybe, for example, the patients in a an hospital. Uh, th that is the experimental part of uh, research. And when it comes to observations, it can be qualitative or quantitative observation. Maybe, for example, uh, in a hospital, let's say, for example, you wanted to maybe uh, to study, maybe observe, maybe uh, maybe for example the rate of maybe for example of weight gain among, among uh, maybe members of a certain population among the patients undertaking certain type of medication. What is the rate of maybe for example weight gain? Maybe for example you or maybe you are administering some uh, medication that. Uh, it is maybe, for example, hypothesized that it will uh, result to a, a weight gain to a certain a group of people, maybe to. Uh, to patients suffering from a certain infection so or a certain disease. So maybe for example, after that, you could be able to identify the quantitative observation. What is the rate, maybe how uh, these people are gaining this weight? So maybe for example, even uh, uh, the underweight, maybe for example, the uh, underweight babies uh, that are normally born in hospitals, maybe for example, uh, you want to actually uh, Maybe uh, in uh, maybe subject these uh, young ones into maybe uh, the incubators. Maybe and uh, maybe after a certain period of time, let's say for example after one month or uh, less or maybe more than one month, 
may be able to monitor how maybe uh, this, uh, how the changes are increasing, maybe observation in terms of temperature, in terms of weight, and also all those. Yeah, that's observation. We'll be able to, maybe, for example, even after carrying out an experiment, the quality of the experiment, qualitative, maybe you want to collect, maybe for example, how efficient is a certain method as compared to others. Maybe you wanted to, uh, you wanted to investigate maybe the efficiency of a certain method in relation to another. So that is maybe, for example, it could be qualitative research. And uh, in terms of interviews, maybe for example, normally it uh, involves the use of uh, questionnaires and also the survey sometimes the surface. And uh, maybe you could develop a structured questionnaire maybe to collect information among one or two people or even a group of people. And uh, it's, uh, it's supposed to survey interviews uh, which involve structured questionnaires it normally take a lot of time, maybe studying a certain, maybe for example, uh, population. It could maybe, for example, take even one month or even two or even a year, depending so maybe, for example, on the objective that I want to uh, undertake. Okay, let's move to the next slide, please. Okay, maybe after, now maybe when uh, you want to undertake your uh, research, you need also to, uh, understand and also you need to consider the sample size. You need to consider how maybe are you going to collect the sample, maybe what is the sample size you need to consider. And uh, sampling can simply define the studying of uh, an entire population by just collecting a simple, uh, a simple uh, portion of it or a small portion of the that population. That is the sampling, yes, collecting a small portion of that population. And uh, maybe for example, in a situation whereby the population is, is too large, uh, to study, that is where the relevance of the sampling come in because you cannot maybe, for example, study a certain population. You want to study maybe, for example, the, uh, maybe the prevalence of a certain, uh, maybe for example, HIV infections among uh, maybe a certain group of people in a particular area. Those people maybe could be very uh, many to conduct a research. So maybe, for example, by just collecting a sample, you'll be able to uh, really help you to understand. Maybe this could be the, uh, the characteristics, it could be the common among uh, people of that population. Okay, it is also important to define a population before selecting the sample. Maybe you, you, need, to, you need to be specific on which population are you going to study. Uh, maybe it could be maybe for example, uh, the males, the females, or maybe children between this age and this age. So it should be very specific also on the type of man and, 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 the, and the, maybe on a, a particular population that uh, on your target population, that is the target population. You will be very specific. And also maybe uh, when coming up with a, a research sample, you need to consider the size of that sample. You need to calculate maybe for example, out of a certain population, I'm going to collect this uh, size of the sample, maybe in a thousand people, how am I going to collect this uh, 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 appropriate and uh, enough sample set that could help you or maybe achieve that objective that you wanted to achieve. So sample sets really matter and uh, you need to calculate the sample before actually going to collect your information. Uh, and also we can say that the larger the sample size, the more accurate the results will be because actually the more the, more the sample and the more the members maybe of a certain population they're studying, the more the more information that you get and the more you are relating towards the uh, the true value yeah that is how close you're going into the uh, observation or into your objectives that's simply very important to notice because uh, actually that's why we need to calculate the sample size before but actually starting the data collection side and sometimes data can be collected from a study population when that population is small it not maybe yeah yeah you can also consider maybe the size of the population. If you see that this population could be very small, maybe a, a group of twenty people or even a hundred of them, and uh, or less than a hundred, and you see that uh, this uh, population could be uh, small. It can be studied. There's no need of conducting sampling, so that is very important. Sampling is very important, and it applies in a very large population that you will see that you not be able to uh, undertake. A data collection and, and for the entire population. Next slide, please. And when you look about the sampling designs, we have the probability sampling and non-probability sampling. And when we see that uh, in probability sampling, we, we have the pure random sampling. And in pure, this is just a sampling technique, very simple, where each member stands an equal chance of being selected. 
so in a population, you're just collecting a symbol random, symbol random members. Collection of maybe, for example, a certain, you are targeting maybe a certain group of students in your institution. So you're just collecting, um, targeting, you're collecting your samples, random, just a random study. And usually there is such a, know the size of the study population. Let's say, for example, a researcher want to know the pharmacological properties of 10 plants in a garden of uh, 100 trees. So maybe, for example, you have a garden, small garden of consisting of 100 trees, and you want to determine maybe, for example, uh, in the garden, maybe how many maybe plants, how or maybe you want to know the pharmacological properties of these plants, which may, which plant among maybe for example the uh, the end the end garden maybe for contain some pharmacological properties, maybe for study purposes you want to identify some plants that uh, have or they have the medicinal. Uh, properties. So it is you maybe for example to contact maybe for example uh, you want to undertake a research study involving 10 plants and you want maybe for example to know maybe uh, which medicinal property do this plant contain so that is maybe a pure random sampling you don't need just need to uh, collect the uh, plants randomly just go random to the field just collect 10 plants from the field and maybe you'll be able to study maybe uh, this is a property of this plant that he had collected random just by conducting a simple random study next slide please the next is the can talk about systematic sampling. And this is where the researcher uh, select the sample based on a system of intervals. Maybe for example, uh, you wanted to study, maybe for example, a doctor conduct a survey about MR after every fourth patient that comes in in his pharmacy shop. Uh, maybe for example, you, you want, you are a doctor in a certain hospital or maybe in your uh, pharmacy, pharmaceutical shop. And you want to study, maybe for example, you want to know, uh, uh, maybe how, how these people how these people uh, are informed of uh, antimicrobial resistance uh, what is their rate what maybe what is the uh, maybe level of knowledge of mr and maybe for example after every patient that comes in maybe for example after four patients or after 10 patients or even after five patients or even after 100 maybe you conduct a survey, a random survey that you just to establish maybe the extent of knowledge of these people in a certain topic. So it is your role, maybe for example, to identify the interval, maybe an interval that you're going to conduct your survey. Uh, that's why we are saying it is based on a system of intervals. So, uh, and maybe for example, it could be a very large, usually it is a, a large population of people and uh, the researcher do not know the exact size of that population. So you use a, a survey just randomly, maybe after certain intervals of time, and maybe of or maybe for example a number of people you are intending to study. Maybe after ten people, you want to know maybe for example, oh, this is how it is. Okay, you're able to uh, study about certain population by just conducting uh, your yeah, SFA, maybe by creating a system of intervals. Yes, the next slide, please. Yeah, in stratified sampling. Uh, the study population normally involves the subdivision of that population into small groups or the subgroups. We can call them uh, strata based on a characteristic they share. Maybe, for example, the, based on type, function, size, and location. And this normally involves maybe, for example, uh, a large, very large population, and you want to subgroup the larger population into small, small groups. So that will be able to uh, use and is in your work of collecting data. It will be easy to collect data when subgrouping a certain population. You are intending maybe, for example, uh, to study a certain uh, feature, maybe in a certain antibiotics or in a certain in certain drugs. So you have to regroup them into smaller, smaller groups. So able to collect information on that particular topic. And uh, the best thing, maybe for example, uh, in each strata is sampled randomly. After subgrouping, maybe for example, the larger population into small groups, you're able to uh, collect just uh, maybe for example, two samples or uh, one sample from each strata. That is from the groups that you had initially made. You're going to collect each sample, each a member from each, uh, from each strata which will be able to help you uh, to ascertain the, uh, your intended objectives. Maybe selecting a drugs based on size, then according to their mode of action. So maybe for example, you have drugs that uh, target a certain site of, uh, maybe for example, as they have a common target site. 
and maybe they vary in size. So we have different groups of drugs that target a common site, but they vary maybe for example in size. So uh, you subdivide the, and, uh, the drugs maybe according to size. Then maybe for example, after that, you wanted to know maybe, okay, these drugs have different, uh, different sizes. So you want to establish maybe what is the mode of action maybe towards uh, the target site maybe to uh, maybe uh, governing maybe as a, what is the mode of action governing the uh, yeah, therapeutic value. So you subgroup first, then maybe for example, you, you collect a sample from each group after the creation of the substrata. Yes, thank you. Next slide, please. Okay, in clustering, we can say that clustering is almost uh, similar to uh, strata, creation of the strata. And in this, uh, it is, maybe you subdivide also uh, the larger population into smaller, smaller groups that we can call clusters and uh, which are then sampled again. So you're also uh, collecting samples from those clusters that uh, you have already uh, subgrouped them. And, uh, but here, maybe for example, you're going only to target uh, uh, specific, specific clusters, not all clusters. Remember in strata, we are sampling each strata we are sampling each group, but in clustering, we are only considering a particular characteristics in such strata. Maybe for example, uh, clustering of drugs based on size, then by color. Let's say for example, uh, you're classifying certain group of antibiotics uh, based on size. And uh, maybe for example, we are going to, and this maybe if these drugs, they vary in color. They, you have the yellow ones, the yellow colored tablets, the purple ones, the red, or maybe for example, the white colored one. So maybe for example, after that, after subgrouping, after creating the clusters, you're going maybe for example, to study how these drugs, uh, uh, how, how maybe for example, these drugs uh, affect maybe, for, maybe uh, based on a certain color, you're going to select maybe on a particular cluster. So you're going to concentrate, you're going to focus on a certain cluster based on color. Next slide, please. In the probability sampling, you can say that it confident uh, the first we can say about confidence sampling, uh, which involves the collection of data from a population that is available at hand. Let's say, for example, you are standing in front of a class and ask people about their knowledge on MR. So maybe, for example, even uh, now, maybe, for example, there's a, in every, maybe, for example, you have a meeting and you want maybe for someone to know maybe the views or the opinions of uh, or the people on a certain topic or maybe about you. So that is the population that is a hunt. You want to get immediate information on a, on a subject matter, on a subject, on a topic of study. So you're just targeting maybe for example that small group of people you want to study, what is maybe for example their views on this, what the opinions on this. So that's a population that is available at hand. Okay, next slide please. We have purposive sampling, and this is where the researcher fully relies on judgments when choosing a sample from a population. So maybe, for example, uh, you're going to target a certain population. So you're collecting a certain sample based on a particular characteristics. You're not going to generalize this. And uh, maybe, for example, you're going to judge this based on a particular, maybe, for example, based on size, based on color, or maybe, maybe on anything, maybe based on function. So this is a passive sampling. Maybe it's also known as judgment or selective uh, sampling because you're going to be very selective. You're going to consider particular characteristics so that you establish that uh, actually uh, uh, maybe a particular topic of interest. Maybe for example, investigation of the fungal activity of uh, uh, purple colored plants. So we have so many uh, different colors of plant, different plants, differing color, differing size. So, but maybe for example, your interest is to study, maybe for example, what is the antifungal activity of a certain plant based on color, that is the purple colored plant. So you're not going to consider other, uh, other, other, the, 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 the other type of plants based on their colors, you know, considering, so maybe whatever the size of the plant, whatever the location. So the main thing that you consider is about the color of the plant, maybe, uh, the purple colored flowers of a certain plant. Okay. In quota sampling, this is where the samples are chosen on a random basis, non-random basis, sorry. And all members of the population do not have an equal chance of being selected. So the, this is not random. Maybe yeah, you're not collecting uh, information randomly. 
the researcher takes a sample that is tailored to some characteristics of a population. So maybe for example, a certain population, uh, you're going to collect sample based on a particular characteristics. Maybe for example, you're going to consider that uh, this particular member of a certain population, uh, actually they possess certain specific characteristics that are, could be of your interest in your research topic. So let's say for example, investigation of the antibiotic activity of benzene ringed natural molecules. So every benzene ring, every molecule, every natural molecule that contains the benzene ring. So you're going to investigate the antibiotic activity. So let's say for example, any other molecule that uh, uh, do not have the benzene ring, you're not going to investigate or you're not going to sample. You're not, it, is, it is maybe from, that is uh, out of your study. You're not going to incorporate or include in your research. So you're not concentrating. Your focus is on the benzene ring, only the benzene ring molecules. So that is what you can say. It's a particular characteristics. It's this a population, maybe it's a group, but you're going to select it based on a particular characteristics. Yes, next slide, please. Okay, that is that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for actually the uh, wonderful participation. Really appreciate. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Jimmy. And I think that was really, really a nice presentation. Uh, so I think the floor is open for questions and answer. So I think we use the next 10 minutes for questions. We are hoping to be done before 8.30 in Ghana or 9.30 in Nigeria. That's DMT and what? So, okay, so if you want to ask a question, you just raise your hand or you can also type in the chat your question and I think I will give you the for to ask your question. So I think our uh, first person is Ayudele. Ayudele, you can mute your mic and ask your question. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed the um, lecture. Yeah, okay. everything was okay and smooth. Okay. I hope we can get the slides after the end of the um, course. Uh, that's just my question. Can we get the slide? Yes, at the end of the course, all the slides will be given to you. You know, this is the first day. So hopefully at the end of the course, uh, everything, everything will be sent and book for you for your convenience so that you can choose to revise anytime. All right. The, the, uh, okay. So I think right, then, then. Then another thing is, can we get? Oh, okay. I can't hear you clearly, sir. Yeah, you can continue with your question. Yeah, another thing is, can we get the personal content of um, the uh, the lecturer so that we can just maybe if you have any question personally about his course, so that it can be like a mentor to Russia, something like that. Oh. Okay, so today being the first, so today, you know, each session we are going to have different- I can't uh, hear you now. So, you know, each session we are going to have different facilitators. So probably after the Q, okay. yeah, after the Q and Q, today's facilitator, he will put his details on the chat button. And I'm sure you can contact him anytime that you want any clarification. All right, all right, no problem. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yes, you do yeah. that right away. Okay. Yeah, sure, okay, sure. So That's like the slides will be made available to everyone. We will share them. Yes, yes. So the slides will be made available. And also today's facilitator will be dropping his contact or details in the chat box. So you should all watch it. Okay, next person, Mr. Yusuf Awasa. Please, if you can hear me, you can go ahead. Please, you see, can you hear me? You can mute your mic so that you go ahead with your question. Hello, you see. Uh, I think you see, can 
hear me properly. Then we can continue with feet. Ask, so after feet, I'm sure you see we'll be back. So feet, can you hear me? You can mute your mic so that you go ahead with your question. Hello, Faith. Can you hear me? Faith, please, if you can hear me, you can mute your mic so that you go ahead with your question. Oh, please. I think I think it is the host that uh, the host can maybe uh, unmute them. They can. They are not able to unmute themselves. Uh, please come again. Uh, I didn't hear you. Sir. Oh, uh, okay. I think they have an issue of unmuting this themselves. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know. I'm sure you have. You should be able to unmute now. Fit. So I having that challenge at your end. Can you check your bottom? If you see where your mic is, you just click on unmute, and you'll be able to unmute yourself. And possibly you can also type your questions in the chat button. Faith and you see. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can see the question. I can see the question from yourself. Yeah. He's asking maybe, yeah. Can you please explain the difference between cluster sampling and strata defense sampling? Thank you, yourself. Okay. To explain this, we said in, in stratified sampling. Uh, we subgroup the larger population into small groups. Now, from the small groups, we are going to collect the data from the small, small groups from, from each strata. Let's say, for example, the strata are called the subgroups. So you are going to sample each subgroup. I, you are going to obtain a sample from each group, each the small, small groups now. So those are the samples that you are going to use in your experimentation, in your research. So that is... Uh, in stratified sampling. So each sample, each subgroup or each strata is sampled. That, that means in other words, we are going to actually to collect uh, the sample from each group, the small groups. But in clustering, you're only considering a particular subgroup. That's the particular cluster, maybe based on a certain characteristics that uh, you wanted to focus on. Maybe for example, uh, the color as you've seen here, Maybe you have a uh, clustering or subdivided a larger population into small groups, but the small groups, again, they differ maybe, for example, in terms of size, in terms of maybe, for example, in terms of color, in terms of function. So maybe you're only going to maybe, for example, to consider uh, specific, uh, the specific clusters, the specific subgroups that, uh, that could really be of your, of your interest. So that's the difference between clustering and, and strat, strata sampling. So in strata sampling, you're going to consider, you're going to collect a sample from each strata, but in clustering, you're only collecting the sample from a particular uh, particular subgroup. I think it is clear now. Okay, so I think there's another question in the chat box also from Fit. So fit is saying that are there two that can be used to determine population size to be used, for instance, of we 
we are carrying out research among university students or any other population that has large size, we need to narrow down. Uh, yes, yes, there is a formula. Yeah, there's a formula that is used to calculate the sample size that you're going to use. Yeah, uh, maybe, yeah, it's, uh, I will share, I think after this, I will share that I did not incorporate in my slides, but uh, I will share the formula because now when considering a very large population, you just only need to consider, uh, you just to, you need to determine a, a sample size that uh, could be of your interest in a certain study population. So because as you have mentioned, yes, true. Those, the, maybe for example, uh, uh, the number of students in a certain university, or maybe, for example, the number of people in a certain region, that's a very large population that uh, you're not able to handle all of them. So actually, uh, determining the right sample for each population, each study population is very important. Uh, and I will help you with the formula uh, after this. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you very much, Mr. Jimmy. And to add, so faith, yes, there's a number of formulas that we use mostly formula depending on what you are looking for or in your study. What I recommend is that mostly some people, what they are studying, the study matter, there's prevalence. So in that case, there's a normal formula like Pokrine formula, which we could use to determine what the sample size. We have other formulas like the Yamani formula, whereby you know the population size, but you don't have the prevalence. So I'm sure as we proceed, today being the first day, had to be as you proceed, you'll be learning most of the things that so yeah, there's a number of formulas that we use to calculate on any sample size that you need. So thank you very much, Sir Jimmy. And I hope it your questions have been well answered. Okay, any other questions? Please, any one with any other questions. So, Mr. Jimmy, please kindly put your details in the chat bottom also for them, so that if anyone needs qualifications later, the person can just contact you. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, I will. Okay, with the next. One minute, I don't know if anyone has a question. So we are giving our time, we are waiting if anyone has a question. So today's sessions has been really, really fruitful. And I think we've all benefited from it. Myself, I've really benefited from today's session. So, once again, we thank you. And on behalf of Ferraz and all the organizers, we say we thank you all for joining today's session. We are still waiting if anyone has a question. And uh, we hope to see you all next week. So today, unfortunately, some were having difficulty joining the Zoom. But I'm sure from next week, uh because we are going to meet more interesting facilitators from next week yes i think uh is it cool Chini do please uh, can you mute yourself so that you ask your question if not you can also type your question inside the chat box yeah can you hear me now Yes, I can hear you now. We can clearly hear you. So we can go ahead with your question. All right. Thank you very much for the session. I really, I really understood, um, like the research and when the, when the slides will be sent, I will go through them too. But I want to ask: Is this research work? Is it limited to just microorganisms, or are there other maybe spacemen we can use to conduct this research works? Please, can you come again with your later question? Okay, owing to the fact that like med lab science is not just limited to medical me medical microbiology, we have like chemical pathology and the rest. Is this research work limited to just microorganisms, or are there okay. like broader, or are there like broader other things that? But I'm sure you get what I'm saying, right? Yes. Yeah. So is that I think we 
this one I can straight away give you the answer. Uh, uh, Mr. Jimmy will just add up. Mr. Jimmy, please uh, can you respond to that as you well after that? I'll just add up. Yes, thank you so much. That's a good question. Uh, no, this uh, actually, the, this uh, type of research or the presentation is not just tailored towards microbiologists or uh, the microorganisms uh, in particular, but it includes every, maybe uh, every other part, any other part of research you want to, maybe for example, whatever, maybe in your field as a pathologist, as a, maybe uh, as an engineer, anybody else. This is not just tailored towards microorganisms. The only uh, the reason why maybe I had used so many examples in uh, including microorganisms and uh, maybe some drugs is uh, just because of those are my particular areas of interest in research. I do a lot of research in microorganisms and uh, in drug research and development. So that, that's why uh, I have used so many examples involving uh, including microorganisms and drug and some examples of the drugs. So actually not just limit, it is not limited to microorganisms alone. Because let's say, for example, uh, when I using, I was using the a population, a population could be anything else, anything, anything that could be anything. It, it is not just about microorganisms. It is also about uh, maybe, for example, you want to study uh, the, maybe the number of patients coming to, uh, let's say, for example, uh, uh, in a hospital party, that is a population that you you want you want to concentrate your study on. So, actually, I hope it is clear now. It is not only tailored towards microorganisms alone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Jimmy. So, continue uh, do. I hope uh, the answer to your question is clearly defined. Ask Mr. Jimmy said yes. Uh, in fact, today, Mr. DB is, I would say, is a microbiologist bias. So that's why most of his examples were geared towards of microbiology. But research is everywhere. You go to the social sciences, at everywhere is research. Even today, I saw someone had done publication about Twitter, about choices on Twitter. So everything is research. Everything is research. So research is applicable in every field, not only in microbiology. So I hope uh, the answers to your questions are well defined. Mrs. Tinidu, or Ms. Tinidu, sorry. Uh, I don't know if anyone has a question. So to all, uh, the facilitator has dropped his details in the chat button. So let's check the chat button for the details. Is that Jimmy has placed his details. So for the next minute, uh, let's check our chat button so that we get his details. So you can either reach him on his phone, LinkedIn or Twitter or, yeah, so let's get the details and from there, is anyone else having a question? Anyone else having a question? So we are giving ourselves one minute if anyone else is having a question. Okay, so uh, Mr. Jimmy, I don't know if you have last words for your audience, uh, anything last to say, or that we bring the session to an end. Okay, thank you so much, Vanessa. Okay, my, my, mine is just to thank everyone for actually uh, taking time, creating time to come to this session and listen, maybe for example, uh, we do understand in some other regions, uh, maybe for example, there's uh, the East African region, it is quite late for them. It's uh, around 11, it's around uh, past uh, 20 minutes. So actually I do appreciate your presence here at Kamat actually as we learn together because actually it is very important as we come together and learn together to every other participant, every other uh, person from uh, any other part of uh, every country or in the world. I do appreciate your presence here. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for inviting this session. We have learned a lot together. And we do hope that uh, as we move forward, uh, we are going to learn together in this course. And uh, maybe I do, uh, I do believe that at the end, maybe Africa will going to have uh, wonderful researchers in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Jimmy. And so today I could see a lot of our participants were from Nigeria. 
from next week we hope most Ghanaians will also be joining us and the same to Africa pool to all other countries in Africa. So once again, thank you all for joining us this evening and we hope to see you next week at exactly eight o'clock in Nigeria time, that's what, or 7 p.m. in Ghana time. Thank you all and see you next week.